Welcome back. The central bank recently announced an extension of deadlines for the recapitalization of microfinance banks in the country. The development, which is contained in a circular to banks, follows the regulator's assessment of the impact of COVID-19 and its implications for the exercise, which had the initial deadline of March the 31st, 2020. But the new deadlines come in phases of one to two years for operations, cutting across four different classes of microfinance banking structure. And to examine the significance of this extension with us now is the national president of the National Association of Microfinance Banks, Mr. Rogers Nwoke. Good morning, Mr. Nwoke, for speaking with us on Business Morning. Now, let's begin with the impact of COVID-19 on microfinance banks. Tell us how it has affected the activities. Thank you very much. Um, good morning. Yes, um, the COVID-19 pandemic has had its toll on several businesses. Um, we are not left out the microfinance banks. Um, as you know, the lockdown in Lagos, Abuja, FCT, and that imposed at different levels by the state governments has made many businesses not to open. And the MSMEs are basically our customers. In some states, the microfinance banks have not been able to open their doors, except those that have e-banking capabilities have been attending to their customers, but well, mostly um, our customers, many have not been able to open their businesses, and these are people who are running different kinds of loans in the system. So basically, the level of operation has affected our businesses negatively. Now, if it wasn't for COVID-19 here now, perhaps by now some microfinance banks would have been forced into business combination and probably cease to exist. But did you actually foresee an extension? Yes. Um, when the situation uh, came in, we wrote to the central bank and asked for an extension um, up to 2023. Our position actually is that recapitalization as necessary as it is, is not what should be in the front corner right now. We should be concerned a lot more with um, forbearance, you know, for our customers. We should be interested in how to have uh, funding to meet the needs of uh, many of our MSME customers who will probably need to risk uh, potential guidelines again uh, as they affect this period given that uh, most people who make their loan payments daily, weekly, monthly, have not been doing so. So we think that um, with what has happened to businesses, recapitalization is not what should be on the top burner, and we ask for an extension up to 2023. Um, unfortunately, um, we haven't had any discussion to look at these issues when we got that memo. We are grateful to the central bank. And the, the national president of the National Association of Microfinance Banks, Mr. Rogers Walker, is back with us to continue the conversation, talking about the new deadline for the recapitalization of microfinance banks. He joins us now via telephone. Now, Mr. Walker, how are operators actually taking the deadline extension, especially those that have already secured partnership agreements with investors? Hello, sorry, can you check the question again? The line is breaking. I was asking how operators are taking the news of the deadline extension, especially for those who have already secured partnership agreements with investors. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Yes, um, it is a big disappointment um, because uh, many of our members um, have looked forward to um, this uh, extension because we saw clearly that... Um, the events that were happening in our business does not support um, a recapitalization at this time. Now, our expectations are that uh, in one year, we should be able to sit down and really look at the issue of recapitalization again. Now, the investors who have entered into different levels of uh, assignments are no longer coming up because nobody can say with precision what's going to happen. Um, we have a few instances, even my bank, was at the verge of concluding some transaction, and suddenly everybody has put everything to a hold. I think that until we are able to see what is happening to the global economy, to the Nigerian economy, 
then you'll be able to raise issues with your investors and take um, the discussions from where you stop them. We are concerned that by this time next year, the issues that will be bothering us will go beyond recapitalization. Now, the new deadline also has some reclassifications across rural to urban and state to national licenses. Is this an indication of a consultation between operators and the regulators before the announcement? No, there were, there were no consultations. We wrote to the um, central bank and we were expecting that uh, we'll be invited you know, to discuss this um, at least hear us out to know why we are asking for extension up to um, 2023. Um, we didn't get uh, the opportunity to discuss it until this circular came out. So our initial reaction to say, okay, at least extension of one year gives us more time to talk and to discuss, but we were not uh, consulted before the date of 2021 was arrived. Hello, can you hear me? Very well. I was asking how far some of your operators had gone before the extension. Sorry, please come again. Mr. Nwoke, I was asking that how far have most of your operators actually gone with the exercise before the extension was announced? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, um, for many of our members, uh, several levels of discussions um, have been going on. At the last uh, meeting of uh, microfinance banks and the central banks is called Combin. The central bank usually brings out the list of uh, people who have met or about to meet um, the um, re new recapitalization um, limits. And as at the last uh, meeting we had early this year, um, less than about 46% of uh, our members were either have met this minimum or about to meet it. So that is the kind of figure. But if we had implemented in it today as a target April, there is a tendency that more than 50% of the existing microfinance banks will not have been able to make it. But for some operators that had secured partnerships and investments from identified investors such as private equity firms, with this extension now, what happens to such arrangements? I'm sorry, you need to repeat the question, please. Sorry. All right, I was asking that for some operators who have already secured partnerships with investors such as private equity firms, for instance, now, what happens to such arrangements now with the extension? We're still hoping to reconnect with Mr. Rogers and walk here in just a moment. But let's remind you about a Skyway Aviation Handling Company, which is actually taking over the ground handling services of British Airways in Nigeria. What this means now is that SACO PLC will now be providing passenger and ramp handling services to British Airways at the Namdi Azikiwe Airport, Abuja, and Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. In a statement released on Tuesday, SACO says the move which took effect or took effect with the handling of the evacuation flight which occurred on May the 8th 2020. In the same vein, Air France has signed another warehousing contract with SACO at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, and this contract will enable SACO to provide cargo warehousing services for Air France throughout the country. In more headlines, the Central Bank of Nigeria Governor, Mr. Godwin Imifiele, says that the financial regulator is developing a framework through which it can provide financial support to achieve a Nigerian COVID-19 vaccine. According to the CBN Governor, the framework will involve grants and long-term facilities to be provided to researchers, science institutions and biotechnology firms to develop a Nigerian vaccine. Mr. Mifiele also says the CBN 
recently launched a 100 billion naira healthcare intervention fund and that practitioners in the pharmaceutical and healthcare sectors will be able to access finance at a single digit rate through this fund and in a bid to cushion the effects of the pandemic on the Nigerian economy the CBN has also implemented several initiatives such as the provision of 1 trillion naira facility for firms operating in the agriculture and manufacturing sectors. Mr. Rogers Nwoke is back with us once again via telephone and let's continue the conversation now. So, Mr. Nwoke, just before we lost you again, I was asking that for those operators who have uh, secured partnerships and investments from identified investors now, what will happen to such partnerships with this extension? I wouldn't say for it is completely issues around COVID-19 and what is happening around the world. It's around our sports venture. For me, everybody will be at the start until things normalize. For however, it is a matter of really happy. If I can still have to do that and things like that. Thank uh, President of the National Association of Microfinance Bank, Mr. Rogers Owoki, for speaking with us. We hope to continue the conversation much later when we have a better platform.